to uh, be speaking today with Akile Salani. Uh, and uh, uh, some of you know, uh, I, I had the equally great pleasure of uh, writing the text for the book on his work that was published uh, last fall by Rizzoli, called Akile Salani. And, um, about this project was um, really learning about Achille's work and how he approaches design. Uh, Achille is definitely a modernist. His interiors and the um, furniture and lighting and accessories that he designs are, uh, I would say, emphatically contemporary. But um, the, uh, the craftsmanship, the materials, uh, the narrative, the historical narrative that's built into some of the pieces um, gives them uh, a layer of history that is not present in a lot of contemporary design. Uh, and I found this really fascinating. Um, uh, Achille um, uh, was born outside of Rome, and his office is located in Rome. Um, he grew up surrounded by the history of art, architecture, design, from um, you know the ancient times to the 20th century. Um, but he, you know, he sort of went off on a different path. And um, so I uh, would love for you to talk a little bit, Akila, about um, your upbringing and also your education, and in particular, um, I'd love for you to talk about your, when after you finished college, um, your sort of fateful trip to uh, to uh, kind of um, mecca of modernist design. Good afternoon. It works. It works. It works yes. Um, thank you, Pilar, for being here with me today. It's an honor for me, and it has been a lovely trip. The book uh, experience together. Um, yes, as Pilar said, I, I was born in Rome, but I grew up near Byron. And um, it has been, I've always been very curious since when I was a young kid. And curiosity probably was something I had in my DNA, but it was also probably stimulated by uh, my father, who used to take, with, with, take me on, on the working side. He was attending, so he was a, a general contractor. And when I was a kid, I used to spend most of my weekends visiting the sites uh, with, with the dust, with hammers, screwdrivers, and all this stuff. And that probably uh, switched on something in my mind, uh, connecting to the knowledge of mixing materials, joining them, how to bend, how to melt stuff together. And this is something, it's, it's an heritage that I could never get rid of. Uh, I remember my mom told me, when I was uh, seven years old, I went to sleep keeping the hammer and the screwdriver <laughs> under the pillow uh, to avoid my sister to, to steal it. So it's something that probably from the very early stage started to be part of my, my existence. Uh, I attended the university, when I finished the college, I attended the university in Rome. And uh, during the studies, I was surrounded by of course, the most beautiful architecture and the most uh, uh, incredible, uh, talented piece of art from all over the eras. Uh, 3,000 years of history in one city, so it's quite a lot. And uh, uh, at, at, at the end of the college, I decided to attempt a one, a grant, in, 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 uh, to, to make an experience outside. And I won two grants. One was in Oxford and one was in Stockholm. And 
and uh, so they were overlapping, unfortunately, I couldn't attend both. They were the same period, and so I, I, I chose for uh, Stockholm because I thought that I needed some new vision of my experience and I wanted to refresh my mind, uh, mixing the modernity of the Scandinavian design with the heritage and the history of the Roman design and Italian, and, and Italian history. So I, I, I attended this one year and a half at the Royal Institute of Technology in Stockholm and for me I, I have this remembrance of being probably the most joyful period of my life. I could study in the night. I woke up at 3, three o'clock in the night and I didn't know what to do and I went to the college to, to browse into books, to, to, to create, to make models. It was something that in Italy I could have never do because of the rules and because of the different system of education. And after this year and a half, my, my, I, I was so impressed and so uh, attracted by this new way of uh, conceiving design, which was very close, uh, connected to nature, very clean, sharp, rounded. Uh, the elements are rather banded rather than, uh, uh, they prefer to bend rather than to join. It was a completely different setting and it, 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 it was for me so joyful that at the end of this period I decided with two friends to take a car and to spend one month and a half visiting all the buildings that Alvarado had, had ever designed in Scandinavia. So we, we, we started from Oslo, sorry, from, uh, from uh, uh, Stockholm and we went up and we, we visited all Sweden, all Norway. Field and ended up in, in Helsinki, doing all cup and coming back. And uh, for me, it was like uh, reading uh, uh, a Google uh, uh, session of, uh, of the Scandinavian design all, all in one shot because it was uh, touching the pieces, having the chance to, to look at them in flash. This is this happened. Completely different stories. You, you can really feel the capability, the, the, how the technique, how the, the, the proportions and, and the aesthetic is, is mixed together. Um, so, not long after that, you um, established your own office in Rome. And uh, one of your early clients was a supermarket chain. Um, you designed uh, supermarket interiors, and <laughs> one of the owners of the company uh, told you that he was buying the yacht and he wanted you to design the interiors of the yacht. But because you had no experience designing yachts, he wanted you to do the job for free. Right. Sometimes in trouble and some others in 
situation where many of the other would not go. And uh, yes, for me it was something that I, I hadn't done before at all. I, I didn't know what, how to, to start from. And it, it, I remember visiting this shipyard and convincing these people that we could have achieved a different design from a person who didn't know anything about design and about, about yachts. Um, I know that this client knew that I had the capability and the, for sure he trusted in my creativity. But the, one, one thing is to think that you know uh, how a good yacht could be like, another thing is how to achieve a result uh, and to, to make it happen. Because differently from a real estate project or a residential interior, a yacht is something you cannot go back. So most of the time, in a, in, a, in a site, when the client visit the site, the proportion of the room doesn't fit the expectation. You can always say, okay, let's lower a little bit the ceiling, or let's move the wall a little bit farther. But in a yacht, it's like a car, it's sort of like an, an airplane, you cannot do it. So everything needs to be decided one year and a half before. Because the time the yacht will be built is so, 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 compacted that any change is not allowed to be. So this was a great challenge. Uh, I, I again I remember fighting with the, with the, with the craftsman on the side, <coughs> saying to me, we've always been doing like this, why, why do you want to do differently? I said, because I want to, to create something new. I don't want to play the same game. I want to, I don't want to invent, but I, I want my experience to be valuable for something. And so when, the, when, the, when we got the boat and we it launched and we floated and it, 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 it was likely what I, what I had in mind, I was extremely relieved. <laughs> that, was the, that was the payment that I got. Um, well, speaking of yachts, the first image we have on the screen is uh, a yacht interior that you can lay on. And uh, this uh, interesting thing about this yacht is that it has really, really big windows. Yes, yes. Really, and we, we will, we'll see another photograph of this uh, yacht interior in a while. Um, uh, but that, but that will give you a little bit of a glimpse into how it's really designed to um, And uh, as you can see, um, everything in everything that you see here um, is designed uh, to be harmonious, to sort of work together as a whole, and, and yeah, it creates this um, uh, very serene impression, uh, and, it's, and it's totally designed to be comfortable. And, and uh, another uh, another aspect of Achilles' work um, is uh, the references in his work. Um, many of them are historical references. Some of them are sort of formal references. Maybe this is both. This is an apartment. Uh, in New York City, uh, and it, it, it's a photograph of the living room. Um, and actually, this sort of illustrates a couple of different aspects of Keeley's work. Uh, the obvious one, because there's a photograph of it, is that the uh, profile of the marble fireplace echoes the profile of the base of this building, which was designed by Rosario Candela. Um, the other, uh, the other thing that this photograph illustrates is Achilles' uh, attitude about using color uh, in rooms. And um, this is a fairly, I would say, a fairly neutral room in terms of the colors of the walls and um, materials and things. But, uh, there, is, uh, there are several points where there is a distinct contrast because of the color. In this case, 
the uh, painting over the fireplace by Lucio Fontana. And do you want to add to that, Achille? Most of the project, the interior design project, starts from um, the person who owned the apartment or the boat. And so, in the first stage, I define myself much more as a psychologist rather than an architect or a designer. And it's to understand what I have in front of me and I need to understand what they are looking for. And I am just a means to reach what they are expecting me to go. And hopefully to take them beyond their own expectation. And so one part of the strategy is also to spend some quality time with these clients at the very beginning, at the very early stage, to clearly understand what is their way of living, what do they collect, what, what needs do they have. And the, the art side, it's, it's, it's a very important aspect of the story. And so most of the projects start from the art collection that they have to create some the, the right canvas for the, the, the paintings to stand in the proper way. In this specific case, the lady uh, was gifted by her husband this Fontana painting from 1952, this red Fontana cut, Concetto Spaziale. And uh, I wanted to recreate the perfect setting to install the painting. So we knew that we would have had a fireplace in the, in the, in the, in the living room and we knew uh, that the, the Fontana would have been there. But we, we didn't know exactly where. And so the idea has been to recreate a sort of frame of the, of the painting itself. So the painting has no frame at all. It's free, it's, it's, it's the canvas, canvas itself because the, the, the moldings and the framing of the of the walls create a bigger the, the bigger frame of the of the piece of art itself. And uh, connected to the mantle of the fireplace, uh, I've always been uh, fascinated by by the roots of the of the place and by the neighborhood. So if someone hires me to build a house in uh, Egypt, uh, the, the, the the process uh, will be probably similar, but the, 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 the project itself and the result of the project will be completely different. There, there is many designers that have a sort of trademark approach. I prefer to have a meter to follow and to reach every time a different result. So, uh, in this case, I wanted this building to overlook Central Park to have a great connection and to be rooted in, in the neighborhood. And so walking by, walking by the, the property, I was attracted by this building by Rosario Mandela. And uh, being one of the very few who made the, the language of the Upper East Side at, at that time, I thought it would have been a good, a good uh, idea to be inspired and to dedicate a piece of the house to a reference referring to his work. Um, can we have the next slide, please? This is the living room of an apartment in Palm Beach and uh, also uh, illustrates Achilles' approach to color where uh, the very sort of subtle uh, combination of the, uh, of the very pale envelope <coughs> and the light blue sofa is accented by the base of the coffee table which is bright red. And um, can we have the next slide, please? Uh, this is uh, this is a yacht interior uh, where the uh, skylight uh, uh, brings daylight down onto the space, and the artwork is by Anish Kapoor. And it, you know, it, it's very unexpected, I would say. Yes, also also here. So far, made the project because uh, the, 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 the piece of art belonged to the to the owners, and he showed me the, the, the elements that he could have uh, uh, hosted on board. And uh, the, the the story of this uh, round disc uh, uh, 
made for me the, the right pattern to, to start to arrange uh, a niche and, 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 a, and a cove in a way, a cradle where, where this uh, uh, piece would have stand it out but still surrounded by, by an environment uh, creating a dialogue with the piece itself. So I wanted the, the natural light to illuminate it rather than the artificial one and we created this skylight which is a sort of uh, satellites elements uh, 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 connecting to the sky and, and, the, and the walls are banded and wrap the piece as if they wanted to protect it. <coughs> Next slide please. Um, this is, uh, this is uh, another uh, example of sort of two aspects of Achilles' work. Again, a uh, historical reference. The uh, image on the right is a painting known as the Ditchley Portrait of Queen Elizabeth by Marcus Gerards the Younger. Um, and um, the shade with its uh, very um, pointy finial um, is, uh, it belongs to a lamb called Lancea. And the, um, this lampshade is a great example of the craftsmanship that you see in Achilles' work. Uh, and uh, just by the way, this uh, shade was made by, uh, by a woman in her 80s, yeah. who uh, one, at one time was an assistant to Renzo Bongiardino. Um, and, uh, um, this is one of the things that I find very compelling about Achilles' work, is that you see something and um, you understand somehow that there is a story behind it. Yes. And it looks this way for a reason. And, uh, and, and, and another element which Achilles told me about when, when we in our many meetings for the book, um, there's another historical layer to this, which is that uh, at one time, Achille lived in a palazzo that was, that, uh, was home uh, uh, to, uh, sorry, uh, Lucrezia Borgia and her brother. And they were quite famous for um, dispatching their enemies permanently. And uh, the and so uh, Achille talks about the <coughs> sorry the image of the dark soul, which is the sort of dagger-like finial emerging from an expensive dress, which is the shade. Uh, yes, I, I used to live in this apartment in Rome, and I my dad told me about this story, so I got documented very very. Uh, soon and, and, and I discovered that this was because Cesare and Lucrezia Borgia were the son of the Pope, the illegal son. Okay. And this building where the place where the mom, which was the lover of the Pope, used to live. So they were born there because the Pope during his hidden uh, uh, escape from the Vatican went to visit this lady into this place. And uh, so it's a, something like 600 years old building. And uh, uh, I was, when every time, every night I went sleeping, I was looking at the ceiling and, and, and dreaming in which room they were born and what they had done and how they had uh, developed their crazy mind. And, and it, it was, so I started to buy old books of the Borgia and reading all the uh, factual stories about their, their crazy existence. And uh, when, 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 when I visited this museum and, and found this lady, I, I immediately got associated the fact that I had known this amazing uh, 83 years old lady who used to work with Mongiardino, who created this uh, sort of capucci dresses, not lamp shades. I, I, would, I wouldn't define just boring lampshades because she creates masterpieces 
and it takes uh, like almost two months to get one lunch shape like this because she hand stitch every single point uh, and, uh, and uh, she doesn't see very well so it's a very long uh, uh, achievement and uh, so I, I immediately was inspired by the, 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 the dome created by the structure of the, of the, of the dress of this uh, 15th century lady who I envisioned to be Lucrezia and, and uh, the lady capable to achieve uh, the, the, the project and to achieve the, the construction of the lampshade and my idea of this black soul coming out as a, as a needle uh, being extremely dangerous and, 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 and uh, uh, rude uh, effort, I would say. But elegant at the same time. Um, next slide, please. Uh, this is a photograph of the uh, process involved in making uh, a cabinet that Achille calls the silk cabinet. And it's a process similar to that of making uh, uh, violins. Um, and uh, uh, the next slide is of the, can I have the next slide please? Of the finished cabinet. Um, which, uh, you know, has really incredibly beautiful curves and uh, um, a wonderful combination of uh, gold, uh, gold leaf and bronze, um, it, which I think is pretty typical of, uh, typical of Achilles furniture, just really beautiful materials, very sensual forms. Um, can we have the next? Uh, and here's another example, which is a stairwell in a yacht. Uh, and um, uh, I'm sorry, Achille, tell me again the, the metallic finish. It's alpaca, which is a, a alloy of copper and silver. Right. So, and it, it's incredibly glowing. Uh, the, the, the stair treads themselves are limestone, uh, but the walls give off this incredible glow. and then, this sort of historical reference uh, is this uh, a photograph of a church called Santa Costanza and the, um, the sort of glowing golden mosaics in the church. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. now, I, I, I love to hide uh, a certain um, historical references that has not to be clear and shouted, otherwise it would be copying. So being, being respectful of, of the past is not copying the past, is knowing the past and having the capability to reassemble and to redesign uh, the, the present and the future, taking in consideration what the past could have, could have taught us. And, and, and in this case, I, I, I had in my mind this, uh, this vision of Santa Costanza. Like this, uh, sort of, uh, it's a sort of a snail, this curve, this uh, uh, um, stairs. Uh, it, it's rounded and intimate. And so I wanted to refer to that, but not get in the possibility. So when, when, you, when you walk in certain uh, 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 volumes and certain um, piece of architecture, you feel that you are going, you are passing through something that is connected to something that you have in mind that you've seen somewhere else, but it doesn't immediately connect to you. And that's the heritage that, that you can transfer to the, to the, to the visitor. Um, this is also an example, it is a chapter of the book uh, on the topic of audacity. Uh, where, um, well, you can see another couple of examples. The next, next image, please. This is in Achille's own apartment in Rome, a uh, corridor with a, uh, a bright blue wall uh, against which uh, stands a, a beautiful wood cabinet by uh, Osvaldo Borsani. And uh, um, at the end of the Corridor, there are a pair of doors that are, sorry, are they Tibetan? Tibetan. Tibetan. Um, and 
then in uh, the next slide, please. Uh, this is we're going back to the yacht that we saw in the first image in the slideshow, um, where uh, Achille has done something fairly unexpected, which is to put a little desk right smack in the middle of this really, really big window, um, which I think would give you the impression if you were sitting there writing a letter that you were basically almost sitting on the waves, um, uh, which, um, you know, I mean, the first time I saw that picture, I thought, wow. <laughs> um, and uh, um, I think another thing that Akile does is uh, he doesn't do audacity just for the sake of being audacious. There's always a balance there. Um, and uh, so, um, in the uh, next slide, please. So and this is also in his apartment. Uh, this, is a, this is a bust of an ancestor of, of your wife's, right? Of your mother, I'm sorry. Um, and uh, it, it's from, wait, what century is it from? 18th? Late 18th. Late 18th century. So, um, in order not to be too reverential, Achille put a pair of goggles on it, uh, which um, that photograph always makes me smile um, because it's sort of just irreverent enough. Um, well, this past has been uh, um, uh, secured in a warehouse for like probably 50 years because my mom told me that she saw in that place since she was seven years old. She's almost 70 now, 75 now, so it has been there for, for a long time. Nobody wanted it because these ancestors uh, always uh, give you the sense of being observed by, by someone else belonging to the history of the family. So this portrait and past are not very, very well, very well welcomed in, in new uh, livings. So they, they, they left it there. And, and when I, I moved to my own place, I said, Mom, would you mind if I would take it? Because I think it's a pity that it's, it's, it's in, the, in the dust and the security is dull and, and, and without sun. He needs to breathe, he needs to live. Okay. So <laughs> I took it. And, uh, one day, I mean, passing by with my, my, my swim sack, uh, the, the, the goggles fall down from the sack, and just for, 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 for a joke, I, I put the goggle on, on him and said, probably we will even live more in a more joyful way. And <laughs> so I left it. Okay. Um, uh, next, next slide, please. Uh, this is a uh, a room in a, a yacht called the Nuntia. And uh, if you, you uh, see the, I mean, in addition to the really beautiful paneling, uh, there, the, 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 uh, the back wall has a screen of, uh, of metal panels. And those are, the they're a direct reference to the image on the right which, which are the doors that lead to the, uh, the, the an office of sort of uh, of one of the owners of the Villa Necchi in uh, Milan, which uh, was designed by Piero Portaluppi in the late 1920s, uh, and those those doors in the Villa Necchi are incredibly famous, um, and. Uh, um, I think that uh, the way that Achille has sort of taken that image and translated it into the into the uh, the screen is just really, really. Uh, it's beautiful. It just, so the, it's the original project was for the owner to uh, be isolated from the rest of the of the living, mm -hmm. but keeping an eye uh, <laughs> to what was going on in the rest of the space. And in this project, I had uh, the problem to uh, uh, divide the dining from a sort of, uh, this is a sort of uh, uh, tunnel that connects to, to the much bigger living room. 
So this is a, a 285 feet plant, <coughs> and it's uh, uh, so I, I, I thought to, to, to revamp this allure from the 20s, the boat is all based on this uh, sense of uh, twist of 20s, 30s, but in a very contemporary way. Again, you can feel some ref reference uh, detailing, but still in a very neutral and contemporary way. And this door, this sliding door, completely disappeared. So the two walls on the right, which are much longer, uh, host uh, the two sliding doors, so you can connect the dining to this uh, space correctly without uh, uh, seeing uh, the existence of the door. Uh, next slide, please. This is a living room in an apartment in, in Paris um, that uh, you know illustrates Achille's approach to um, to mixing things, to having sort of a let's say a symmetrical arrangement of the prints on either side of the fireplace that contrasts with the very asymmetrical mirror that he designed and the fireplace mantle. Um, Achille, maybe you could talk briefly about well, this your approach. Is, this is a, a pied-à-terre in the Citien, which is the very prestigious uh, neighborhood in Paris, nearby the, um, nearby the river, uh, the Seine River. And, and uh, it's, uh, uh, the, the, the collection of the owner is, it was extremely eclectic. He had a lot of pieces. Uh, in, in, in America, there is much more the rule uh, in any new uh, project to demolish the, the, the old one and to start with a new, a completely different story. While in Europe, there is much more the sense of taking this luggage with you and uh, showing and displaying in a different so I went to visit the former apartment of this uh, gentleman, which is a very elegant man of, uh, in, the, in his uh, 70s, I would say. And it's, uh, it, it, it won't, it, it did move in this new apartment and he had a series of elements. And so what we did is we recreate the same story in, in a different, so the music is different, but the, the, the notes are always uh, the same notes. And, uh, and it's uh, slightly interesting to see how it's from the 50s mix, mix uh, with uh, some uh, prints uh, from the Napoleonic campaign and some uh, neoclassical uh, drawings uh, with contemporary pieces. It's, it's all based on beauty and heritage. So if you mix pieces that belong to different eras and uh, belong to different provenance, uh, even the color palette could sometimes be not exactly what you are expecting, but mixed together they can create a, a real story if, if well proportioned and, 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 and created and put in the right places because under the dome of beauty you, you don't get any risk, everything will ever work. Uh, next image please. Uh, this is a, a, another example of uh, Achilles' approach to contrast and it's not very easy to see I'm afraid. Um, but in the uh, framed pieces on the cabinet in the master bedroom of uh, Achilles apartment in Rome, there are two uh, framed uh, images side by side overlapping. And the one in the back is, uh, is uh, Richard Avedon's very famous photograph, Dovima and the Ele Elephant. But to the left of it are uh, two little photographs of uh, the, the two last cannibals on, the, on Fiji, which, uh, which Achille bought on a visit there. And, um, and it, I, I'm sorry that you can't see it up close, because up close, it's pretty funny. Even, um, it, there's just something so incongruous about it. And of course, it works really well. Um, could we have the... Um, <coughs> Uh, the next image, please. Okay, this is the living room of Achilles' apartment in Rome. And uh, the, the, the building was uh, sort of the turn of the 20th century, very late 19th century? Very late. Yeah, very late 19th century. Um, and you can see it 
has really lovely proportions. And in, in this room, um, uh, Achille has combined pieces of his own design, like the triangular uh, coffee table, which actually houses an artwork, yeah. um, and uh, um, vintage 20th century pieces like the armchairs to the right, which are, sorry, Achille, who designed them? No, the, 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 the orange one? Which one? No, the, the brown on the right. Yeah. Uh, well, the, yeah, the, the colors are, the two, the two brown ones are mine, while yeah. the two on the right are from 20s, 1920s. Right. Um, and then uh, the art on the walls is um, modern and contemporary art, which sort of adds uh, another interesting contrast um, and kind of really pulls the room out of, uh, I don't want to say that, and it just, it, it creates a really interesting contrast to the architecture and to the kind of layering of, um, of the furniture and accessories and things like that. Um, a very nice conversation between old and new. Uh, next image, please. Um, uh, this photograph, again, is another uh, sort of historical inspiration. Uh, th this is a photograph of a, uh, is this the same skylight? No, it's a, no, different. It's a different skylight. Uh, in a yacht. And uh, the photograph on the right is the dome of uh, Borromini's Church of San Carlo alle Quattro Fontane in Rome. And um, you see sense of movement there, of sort of tension in uh, Borromini's dome that Achille has translated in a very contemporary way. Yeah, the, the eclectism of the, of the, it's all, it's all based on negative and positive. So it's all a, a rhythm of uh, elements that, that vibrates and keeps the space always alive. And uh, in, in this uh, uh, small foyer, I wanted to re evocate this uh, classical uh, reference, and, uh, and uh, yeah, it's, it's made by these layers of uh, uh, skylights that uh, draw uh, in, in different levels, so that uh, the white elements that you see are all uh, one after the other, so it's layered with, with the LED stripe inside, so you can have this sort of uh, uh, elliptical or organic uh, satellites and the shape of the wall which is made of mono monochromatic brush and land teak as the ceiling itself it's a solid sculpture re-evocating this baroque uh, approach. Uh, next image please. Uh, this is the other end of the living room of Achilles apartment and so you see more uh, contemporary art, uh, including in the, in, uh, in the corner, the large white canvas, which is by Ilya and Emilia Kowakov, um, and um, uh, the sort of yellow, is it the yellow color in that? Inspired uh, the, um, the, uh, the fabric upholstery yeah. for the two chairs underneath, which were designed by... The, the, uh, the armchairs were designed by Ponti for... No, for, uh, sorry, those are from Zoncada. For, yeah. And they are designed for a vessel called uh, Raphael, right. which was a liner that made the uh, from Rome, where uh, Rome, Cinta Vecchia, to, to, to New York mm -hmm. in the, I think, 50s. Right. And just an interesting side note there, um, when uh, Achille designs yacht interiors, he designs a lot of furniture himself for these interiors. But when he uses vintage pieces, he likes to use uh, pieces that were designed by people like Zancada, Ponti, uh, Lugino, or yeah, 
Julelu for, specifically for ships, because they have a very low center of gravity. These designers knew that because of a ship's tendency to roll, uh, you don't want to be too high off the ground or you can end up tipping over. Um, and it also sort of makes you feel a little queasy. So, um, there is a, a number of there was a big mistake by many talented designers that don't understand that a yacht is not a house. <laughs> a yacht is much closer to a car or an airplane than to a house. Of course, when we move to these crazy dimensions, you associate immediately to the spaces you would have in a big apartment or in a big house. Because when you talk about 400, 450 feet long, it's ships. And a ship, when you think to a ship, you never think to a, to a car. You think to a palace, but you don't think to a car. But the rules that you have to play inside to create the space and to adjust it are completely different. So a house is rooted and fixed on the soil, and the house is extremely influenced in its shapes, in its uh, development, by the neighborhood. So a room can be dramatically affected by the view of the window. So if you overlook a park, that, that room will be a room. If you overlook a, a, a blind wall, it will be a sad room and probably you will use it for a different uh, purpose. A yacht always move. So that the, the window faces always different scenarios. So you need to work inside. You cannot connect to anything outside. And then a yacht moves like a, a car or a plane. And, and, and the sense of instability that you, you have being a guest of a, a floating vessel, it's not like being a stable city in this tool like this. So it's, it's a different story. So big mistakes when they take pieces from the industry or from uh, uh, any other, you know, uh, market, and, and they move just move inside and decorate it as if they were doing a big apartment. Right, and as you said, one of the big no-nos is bar stools. <laughs> <laughs> um, could we have the next slide, please? Oh, okay, this. And this is the dining room of the Palazzo Colonna, which is a very, very <coughs> historic building in Rome. This is the most the prestigious noble palace, considered to be the most prestigious noble palace in Europe, and probably in the world, because, just to give you an idea, it was the palace that Louis XIV took as an inspiration for Versailles. So the room of, of, of the, the gallery of Palazzo Colonna is uh, something like 350 feet long and it's one unique room. And it's, uh, this was uh, a painter, a painter attic oh. and, and it was completely abandoned so the prince didn't even know that he owned oh, wow. that space. Okay. So uh, the, the, the painter who, who was renting it <coughs> since probably 50 years died and so he had to put this space back at the market and my clients uh, noticed it, were advised about this possibility and we recreated uh, uh, something close to the uh, heritage and the importance of the palace in a very understated and minimal way not recreating any uh, this palace uh, Contains treasures from Michelangelo to to to, to Raphael to Leonardo. The, all, all the most important art, artists in the world are some some traces there. And the, the palace was grown on on a Roman temple. So it's uh, the, the layers of different eras. You have the Roman, you have the Middle Ages, you have the Renaissance, the Baroque, the 18th century. At the very recent one. So it's uh, a lot of history there. Yeah. So for this dining room, the the gigantic gilt framed mirror that you see in the photograph belonged to the owners, right? Yeah. It was a family heirloom. From Venice, yes. 
colonies, um, the, 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 the ladies from Venice, the origin of the family, and this belonged to her grandmother, who inherited by her grandmother. Right. So that was kind of your starting point. Yes. And so you designed, uh, you designed the light fixtures, you designed the folding doors to the room, and then you designed the dining table. Um, maybe you could talk briefly about that. Well, the, 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 it was really complicated to place this huge mirror that in a palace uh, of uh, 350 years ago would have fit that quite complex to install in a contemporary apartment. And also for the dimension, I think it's something like uh, uh, 10 by, by 8, 10 feet by 8, so it's quite grand. And uh, so the idea was to put it in the center of this huge dining room uh, to center the space and to mirror the space. So the, the mirror reflects exactly the door, which is made of bronze and silk. It's a sort of uh, uh, raw dry silk uh, panel door with uh, a, a bronze framing and this sort of buckle made of, made of bronze. And uh, when the doors are open, the mirror entirely reflects the living room, which is beside, and expand to the garden of, of, the, of the palace, which is amazing. It's full of, uh, it's, it's an Italian garden with fountains and with palms and with uh, vegetation. So it's, uh, it's all reflected by this, this uh, mirror, yeah. Um, uh, next slide, please. Uh, Achille uh, talks in the book about uh, the importance of symmetry, but he uh, believes in a sort of imperfect symmetry, something that's uh, not rigidly symmetrical, it has a little twist. twist, and this yacht interior is a good example of that. Um, next photograph, as is uh, this photograph, which is uh, the same um, living room of same apartment where you saw the Fontana painting hanging over the uh, candela-inspired fireplace mantel. Um, and you can see in the mirror, you can see the Fontana reflected as that sort of bright spot of red. Um, uh, and uh, the next image, please. Um, and here, again, you have symmetry, but not uh, in uh, another, in this yacht, with the um, it's very asymmetrical skylight. And uh, in this sort of little niche is uh, a console called Tango, which Achille designed. And as you can see, he was inspired by watching tango dancers and the way their legs uh, are constantly crossing. And you see that in the way that the bronze legs of the console are designed, and they also look as if they are in motion. Um, and uh, finally, we have, uh, again, we're back to the, the nuptia, where you're looking in, are we looking in the opposite direction? Yes. Um, and, and again, um, you see this really, really uh, beautiful, luxurious paneling. And also in, in this room, um, Achille was inspired uh, by Lorenzo Mongiardino's uh, idea of layering views. There was a, a, a particular project that inspired you, Achille, right? Yes, th this, is a, this is a very narrow tunnel that connects two extremely spacious and, uh, and uh, lightful places. So, the, the, in, in the farther uh, after this, this tunnel, you can see the, the big living room, which is surrounded by glazed uh, surfaces full of light. And then on, on my, behind my shoulders, uh, we have the dining room which has two giant uh, windows uh, siding the yacht. So this is a, a tunnel which is always a big problem in yachts because it contains the ducts that 
goes from the engine room up to, to the upper part of the yard. So it's two completely dark walls that most of the time are stupidly decorated or very... It's, it's, it, it, it still remains a passage because very, it's, it's really very, very hard to treat. So the challenge here was to transform the, the dullest and uh, probably less uh, uh, you know, important space that connected the, these two vast spaces into a jewel. And so I recreated these uh, tiles made of brushed oak uh, that are wrapping, brushed ink, sorry, that are wrapping uh, like if it were a Chanel suit uh, uh, and with this uh, uh, light, lighting feature that I cast, uh, that I created with my hands, uh, the moldings, it, that it's, uh, made, it's like sea virgin that have, instead of uh, spires, they have holes. So when the lights pass through, it creates these uh, spires made of light. And now the, the picture doesn't give real justice, but in the evening, you have this uh, ceiling that overall uh, creates this dreaming, dreamful uh, atmosphere. That, and most of the people, instead of sitting in the main living room, or in the other room, prefer to sit here. And this uh, uh, organic bar, it's made of parchment and stainless steel, and create a sort of, uh, it's like if uh, the wind uh, has passed through this tunnel and has uh, uh, playfully uh, uh, created the shape of, of this dead country. Uh, the next two and final two images, uh, oh, I'm sorry, oh, not, not true. Uh, I forgot this one. This is, uh, this is a dressing room in the uh, Palm Beach apartment that we saw a while back, the one with the pale blue sofa and the red coffee table base. Um, very symmetrical, inspired by the colonnade at St. Peter's in Rome, but um, uh, not totally symmetrical. If you see the, um, the glass doors have bronze handles that are shaped like gingo leaves, but they are, each one is different. And um, the, uh, the handles of the dressing room doors, uh, the, the closet doors, are uh, also cast bronze. Um, but those are evoke, I mean, one, it's, one is, one is one, the, 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 the husband, the and the husband other is the wife. The wife yes. <laughs> uh, so it's, again, symmetrical, but it's not. Uh, and okay, so the next image, okay, this is a new project that Achille is working on. This is a yacht called the Tuhura, and the, uh, the hull was designed by Igor Lobanov. And it, what, what it really looks like is a gigantic canoe. It, it looks nothing like uh, what you see in today's yachts. Uh, which tend to look sort of more and more Darth Vader-like. Um, and you look at this and it's, I mean, it's very sleek, but the shape of it is almost primitive somehow. So, um, uh, Akile, uh, maybe you could talk a little bit about so this the, particular the, space. Yeah, it is a little bit more than 430 feet long. So it's a giant uh, toy, and yeah. it's, uh, it's exactly as a oceanic canoe you can imagine. Scale it uh, for that length, and it's exactly the, the shape of the boat. You can easily Google on, on the web and see the, the aesthetic. Unfortunately, we don't have it here. The head. Probably we made a mistake not to have a picture referring to this theory. But anyway, the challenge uh, and the, the commission of the client uh, was to recreate, to make, to make, the, the challenge was to make a step farther, we need to, to make like 10 steps behind, rewind. We, we, we need to start from the early origin. So the, the shape evocates the interior naturally, evocating this sort of oceanic uh, uh, flair. So it's all sculptural wood that is brushed, that's very rough. And evocates a cave or uh, I don't know a primitive uh, settlement. So
So also the sitting area are referring to the tents and the, and the settlement that the primitive uh, Aboriginal uh, people used to create and also the, the sitting with the stones and these sculptural elements who refer to the past in a very plain and serene way. Also the pattern of the, of the carpet which is in silk evocates, this is all fake, this is a rendering. The boat is in construction and will be finished in four years. So this is just a C CGA image. And but the, the carpets will be this silk with this uh, pattern evocating the sand and the water just released from a wave. And the, 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 the boat is, uh, is quite fun because it's completely uh, uh, without any port. So it's completely solid from outside. You don't see any port or any window. But then suddenly this, this huge uh, sort of opening uh, sections opens and became terraces. Behind the section, the sides of the hull. The sides of the hull opens like this and create a platform for a terrace. So the terrace, the two armchairs are laying on a terrace. That during the the, the crews are closed. Eventually, can be can stay open but when when the, it goes transatlantic or transoceanic ship uh, trips. It closes. And and the center of this giant living room is dominated. You can go also in the other one as well. It's dominated by this fireplace, which is the central part of the yacht, which is a round fireplace. And it's this kind of big mushrooms that hide the duct that we were talking before. So instead of having a limit, I trust I I like to play sometimes, and the limit can be the asset of, of, of the project. So sometimes you don't have a window and you make the wall to appear a standing wall. Uh, you have narrow corridor and you, you play with it in a way that they appear giant, uh, putting off-scale elements in the corridor and minimizing the, the, the drama or maximizing the drama. In this case, this big duct interrupted dramatically the view of, of all over the space and so I recreated this round fireplace and like a mushroom, so it, it grows and expands and dilates the space. And, and also the lines are not symmetrical, they break like uh, fragmented on a lunar uh, surface. And those elements, so hide the dining area, which are, you, you there can see the, the, how vast is the, the, the portion on the side of the hull that opens. It's almost, I think, uh, uh, probably would be 30 feet by, I don't know, 3 that opens. And, and um, you can see that the, the elements, the vertical elements that hides are like uh, stalagmites and stalactites that grows from the floor and comes from the ceiling and creates this uh, cove uh, for the dining to be, to be hidden but still uh, joining the rest of the space. Elements are 
much closer to be connected to a, a, a human body. So uh, could be the interior of a, of, 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 a, of a skeleton, could be uh, could be a fish, could be uh, uh, an animal, could be anything, but it has to be round and soft and recreate the sense of calm to just the organic shapes can, can transfer. Sorry? Has it ever scared me? Like, has, has, have you ever had any pushback from a, like a client saying, like, oh, I don't like that shape? Uh, no, most of the time they get uh, immediately familiar because they don't know those shapes that they have in their, their body itself. So they, they don't know how to adjust them, they don't know how to place them, but when they see them, they immediately get familiar with it. Sorry, C7. Uh, 